during graduate school, I would actually keep a whole box of LaCroix sparkling water underneath my desk just so I could have one every single day. And this is not sponsored by LaCroix, although I do love their products as a side note. But what I find is the most interesting thing about these sparkling or bubbly waters is how much we love them even though they cause us pain. The next time you open your sparkling water and take a drink, actually try to pay attention to what you're feeling in your mouth and your throat because you'll probably notice sort of this like stinging or tingling sensation or uh, maybe you'd call it like a tickle in your throat. But anatomically, what's happening inside your mouth is actually your pain receptors are going off. So the sparkling water is causing irritation in your mouth and throat. And what's interesting is scientists have tried to test if other animals also like sparkling water or if it's us humans that are weird. But what scientists saw was actually that horses did not want to drink sparkling water, dogs also rejected it, and even mice didn't want to drink the bubbly water. So it might be just us humans that like the irritation it causes. Now, sparkling water is by far not the only food or drink that stimulates your pain receptors in your mouth. There's actually a whole slew of these types of sensations and they're known as chemisthesis, which is yeah, kind of a hard word to say, but chemisthesis came from the term common chemical sense. They sort of smushed common chemical sense together and now we just call it chemithesis. But what this term means is that these sort of sensations, they are not taste and they're not odor. So this is an entirely different category of sensations. So these are actually triggered when a chemical or a compound, for lack of a better term, gets into your mouth and it either stimulates a touch receptor, pain receptor, or a thermal receptor. So this has nothing to do with like your taste buds, which of course are stimulated by taste ends or taste compounds, or the receptors for odor in your nose. It's a totally separate mechanism. So in simple words, chemithesis is basically the ability of your body to feel a chemical or a compound in your mouth and alert your brain as to what's happening. Because most of these uh, compounds that trigger these types of receptors are actually irritants. So your body wants to let your brain know like, hey, something that we think is bad has just entered our body. That way your brain can tell you how to respond correctly. And other chemithesic sensations include things like spiciness or hotness, as in temperature hotness. Um, if you've ever had mint or menthol products that cause sort of like a cooling sensation or numbness, that is the same thing. Um, a dryness or a, uh, a wine that makes you sort of pucker your lips. These are all examples of chemithesic sensations you've probably experienced in your life. And every once in a while, you might see chemithesic sensations actually referred to as trigeminal sensations. And I covered uh, trigeminal sensations in one of my previous flavor videos, if this sounds familiar. And the reason they're sometimes called trigeminal sensations is that we have this huge nerve in the front of our face. It's called the trigeminal nerve. And this nerve actually has free nerve endings in our mouth, in our nose, in our eyes. It's just basically the whole front part of your face. And it's these free nerve endings of the trigeminal nerve that are responsible for alerting your brain when it irritants, uh, you eat an irritant or breathe an irritant. So that's why sometimes chemithesic sensations might also be called trigeminal sensations. Now you might be wondering, why do we keep drinking sparkling water if it's causing us pain? But the key here is that it's causing a low amount of pain, just a slight irritation. And most people actually like this low amount of irritation or they find it pleasurable. So we keep on drinking more sparkling water. And you could say the same thing about spicy food, right? Why do people 
keep eating spicy food even though their mouth is on fire, their nose is like running, and their eyes are watering? Well, people must like it. What has remained a mystery until pretty recently is what exactly in these sparkling waters is causing those pain receptors to go off because all these products are, are, of course, water. But before the container is closed, whether it's a can or a bottle, you force in some carbon dioxide and then you quickly seal it off. And so actually these products inside the container, they're pressurized, they're at a higher pressure. And at this point, when the container is sealed, the carbon dioxide is probably just dissolved in the water. It's not in the bubble form yet. The only reason carbon dioxide turns to bubbles is when you open these containers, you twist off the top, you are releasing the pressure. It was at a high pressure. Now you release it to lower pressure. And what happens when pressure is lowered is the carbon dioxide turns into bubbles. And that's why when you open, you know, this bottle, you hear, you hear like a noise, like a shh. I'll have to add this in, but it sounds like a shh. That noise is actually the pressure being released. And this is when the carbon dioxide bubbles form. So what people thought for a long time was that it's actually the bubbles causing this pain or irritation. And I can totally understand this assumption because you can kind of envision in your mind that as you're drinking this carbonated water, the bubbles are popping on your tongue and that's what, you know, stimulates those pain receptors. But for a very long time, no one tested this hypothesis in an experiment. So there actually is a more recent study where they finally said like, hey, we're going to test this hypothesis that it's actually the bubbles bursting causing the pain and not something else. And this study is actually pretty cool because what they did was they took a hyperbaric chamber. Hyperbaric means like high pressure, hyperbaric and they had people drink a sparkling water or carbonated water in the high pressure chamber because at this higher pressure even if they opened the container of water the bubbles would not form right because the bubbles only form when you release it to low pressure so the pressure is too high for actually those carbon dioxide carbon dioxide to turn into bubbles but what's interesting is even when these people drank the sparkling water in the hyperbaric chamber, they still felt that tingling or stinging sensation with no bubbles. There's no way the bubbles could form. So what this means is it's not the bubbles that are triggering our pain receptors. It has to be something else. And so this study needs to come up with a new hypothesis. So if it's not those carbon dioxide bubbles bursting on your tongue, what is causing these sensations or that stinging? And so what this study points the finger at is the fact that if you have carbon dioxide in the presence of water, which would be the case, on your tongue, there is actually a salivary enzyme, an enzyme in your saliva called carbonic anhydrase. And what this enzyme would do with the carbon dioxide and water is convert it into carbonic acid. And so what triggers our pain receptors is this buildup of carbonic acid. It's due to this acidification in our mouth. And this acidification where there's a lot of acid building up is what ends up triggering our pain receptors and sending the signal to our brain. So if you're one of those people like me who really loves carbonated water, you probably really enjoy that stinging or that tickle in your throat. But if you know someone who just hates these carbonated waters, it might be because they are just so sensitive to this type of irritation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and hit subscribe so it can reach more people. And I will talk to you next time.